In this presentation, we're going to look at convertible bonds and how we'd convert those bonds into common stock. So originally, we issued uh, convertible bonds and our bondholders now are holding these bonds. And what we want to do is we want to exchange uh, common stock for at least a portion of these bonds. And then the bondholders would return that portion back to us in exchange for that common stock. So here is our example here. We have a hundred thousand dollars worth of bonds payable. That's a liability here on the balance sheet and that's based on a par value of a thousand dollars per bond in a quantity of a hundred bonds outstanding. So uh, when we originally issued these bonds we received a hundred and four thousand one hundred dollars for them. So they were sold at a premium here and we needed a, a balancing account here between the cash uh, of 104100 and the bond payable of $100,000. So we set up this valuation account here, premium to bonds payable. Now that's an um, account that increases the bonds payable account. And then that valuation or that uh, premium to bonds payable, we recorded it at $4,100 here. So that was the balancing entry between the credit here of $100,000 and the cash amount here of $104,100. And now we amortize that premium of bonds payable down to this date that we want to convert them here. So we have to figure out what our carrying value is at the date that we convert these bonds. So in this case here, we had a premium amount here of $2,647, and then the net carrying uh, amount of that bond here was $102,673. So that's the figure we're going to work with here when we convert those bonds into common stock. All right, let's go through the mechanics of this bond conversion. And we're going to be using the market value method here. Remember that, the market value method. So number one here, the bondholders converted $40,000 worth of those convertible bonds, or 40% of the convertible bonds that were outstanding here, into the issuer's $5 par common stock. And then looking at our numbers down here, the number of bonds converted would be the $40,000 worth here divided by $1,000 per bond or 40 bonds. And then the number of common stock or shares that were issued here would be based on the 40 bonds times $10 per share, which we're offering the bondholders for each one of those bonds. And that would amount to 400 uh, common shares or common stock of 400 here. So going up here and looking at our bonds payable and our premium to bonds payable, which are liabilities on the balance sheet, we'd reduce those by that 40% of the bonds that we converted here. So the bonds payable would be reduced by $40,000 here. And then our premium to bonds payable would also be reduced by that 40% here. So we'd end up with $1,069 here. So remember this premium to bonds payable, that uh, percent reduction here is based on the carrying value of, in this case, a premium or uh, a discount at the time of the conversion. So going up here and looking at the common stock that we issue, which is part of stockholders equity on the balance sheet here, we would uh, uh, credit here our common stock for the uh, par value. That would be the 400 shares that we issued times the $5 par value per share or $2,000 here. Now our additional paid in capital, we'd increase that and that would be based on the number of shares we issued times the issue price or the market price of those shares less this par value up here. So in this case we'd have 400 shares issued and our issue price was $80 per share or the market price let's just say is $80 per share less this $2 par value. And then uh, our total amount here at additional paid in capital will be $31,200 here. So what we have to do is we have to recognize a gain or a loss on the difference here between this equity account here for our common stock and this liability account here for our bonds payable, whatever our carrying value is here. So our carrying value on the converted bonds here, total amount was 40000 plus the 1069 or $41,069 here. Now the market value of this stock that we recorded here, the par value plus the additional paid in capital was $33,200. So we recognize a gain or loss here on our, in our net income on the income statement. In this case, it was a gain. So we take the bonds carrying value 
less the market value of the stock here. And in this case, it was $41,069, less the $33,200. And then we the difference here was $7,869. Now we would credit this uh, revenue account here, or this gain on this for this exchange here, of, for $7,869. So that's a review here of how we'd go through the mechanics and record the uh, journal entries here using the market value method. Now just remember here that we had to recognize a gain or a loss here on the difference between the carrying value of this bond here as a liability and the uh, market value here of the common stock as part of stockholders equity. Review what we've done here and this is using the market value method here. So for our bonds payable and our premium to bonds payable here which is liabilities on the balance sheet we reduce those by the amount of those bonds we exchanged here using the carrying value of those bonds here. Now over here for our common stock which is part of stockholders equity on the balance sheet we increase that by the market value of the uh, stock that we issued here or the issue price of that uh, stock here. So taking the par value plus that uh, issue price here we increased our equity here by $33,200. And in the case here of these, this bonds payable, we decreased the liability here by $41,069. So we have a difference here between this equity credit amounts here of increase of $33,200 plus this debit or reduction here of our liability. So that remainder here we had to recognize either as a gain or a loss here and part of net income on the income statement. And in this case the difference here was a gain here of $7,869. So what we've done here is we de decreased our liabilities by the carrying value of those bonds we converted but we increased our equity only by the market value of the shares that we issued. And then the difference here we had to recognize in this case it was a gain here. So that's how we would uh, summarize here uh, how the effect here on the decreasing liability and increasing the equity here on that conversion of the bonds.